poor children. What bring you here? Come inside and stay with me. I will not harm you. <laughs> Once upon a time in the land of handsome princes, noble kings, and beautiful princesses, there also live a wicked witch, a wily wolf, and a ginormous giant. Deep in the forest was the vilest of all. A wicked witch! Who casts another evil spell. Once upon a time, a wicked witch lived with her daughters and a servant girl in a strange, twisted cottage. The servant girl liked to dream of marrying the prince, but in reality, she was treated dreadfully by the witch and her lazy daughter. While they watch Match of the Day, the servant girl was still scrubbing the floor. Now yeah, get on with it, you lazy child. You've got to eat off that in the morning. Ha <laughs> ha! Every day, after what passed for breakfast, the servant was sent to the well to collect two huge pails of water. A round trip of some 17 miles. And woe betide her if she spilt any. One day, sitting by the well, was a very old man. Spare me a little water. Of course, said the kind girl, ladling out a cup. Your kindness will be rewarded. Will I marry a prince, she asked. But she had to wait until she got home to realize her reward. Because, as she explained to the witch why the pail was a cup short, a diamond popped out of her mouth. Ah, so your gentleman friend rewards you with a diamond, eh? <laughs> you better go back and see if he's thirsty again. <laughs> so, instead of collecting diamonds to give to the prince, the witch stole them to make a necklace for herself and accordingly sent the luckless servant back to the well where the old man was still waiting. Spare me some water, he begged. And as before, she gladly ladled out a cup, then trudged back to the witch's cottage. The moment she opened her mouth to speak, out popped another diamond. Not hiding any more in there, are we? But the pattern seemed to be one journey, one diamond. As the poor girl was sent back and forth to collect water and the diamonds. As the witch's necklace took shape, the poor child became so exhausted from her journey that one morning she couldn't move. You'll have to go instead. Here, take a taxi and try and be nice to the gentleman. When the daughter arrived at the well, she saw the old man there. Spare me some water, he begged. Get it yourself, then hand over the diamond. 
Your kindness will be rewarded when you reach home, said the old fellow, with that kind of irony so sadly lost on children these days. But when she reached home, the moment she spoke to the witch, a horrible, slimy toad leaped out of her mouth. Ah! Couldn't you be nice to him for once? I only need one more diamond for my necklace. Here, you! Go back one more time, said the witch. The old man was pleased to see her and asked to see her diamonds. There must be quite a few by now. She told how she had hoped to give them to the prince, but how the witch was keeping them for herself. But they were for you, child. I know. Now I'll never rise above my station, which in her case was Birmingham New Street. The very old man, determined to help the servant girl, he said not to worry, because he would put a magic spell on the prince that would make him go crazy for three days. This spell would end at midday on the third day, and she must be there to touch him at that exact moment. That way, it would seem as if she had broken the spell, and the king would be so happy he'd be sure to reward her. It's not just witches who do magic, said the old man, and he was right, because the prince did go crazy. Very crazy! And the king summoned all the wise people to try and cure him. He also summoned some not so wise. Fee, fi, fo, fum. When I clap, the spell's undone. Oh, Bill, nobody's perfect. As midday on the third day approached, the servant girl said she had to go to the well, but instead, turned up at the palace. Who is this young fool I see before me? Let me cure your son. I only need to touch him. Oh, many have tried, but all have failed. But as the palace clock struck twelve, the girl lightly touched the prince on his shoulder and he was cured in an instant. Remarkable, said the king, who showered riches on the servant girl and invited the prince to marry her. The witch never got the final diamond to finish off a necklace, but nevertheless took it to a jeweler in Bond Street, where certain pickpockets were known to operate. might turn for the diamond.